Carlyle Companies Incorporated is a global diversified company that designs, manufactures and markets a wide range of products that serve a broad range of niche markets including commercial roofing, energy, agriculture, lawn and garden, mining and construction equipment, aerospace and electronics, dining and food delivery, and healthcare. Topic Early History 1917-1959-1917, Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company, the precursor to Carlisle Companies Incorporated, began operations on September 12, 1917. Charles S. Mummy, founder of Carlisle, had been working for his father at the Keystone Rubber Company in Erie, Pennsylvania. By 1917, Mummy had saved enough money to buy $4,000 in machinery and had an agreement from Montgomery Ward and Company to buy bicycle inner tubes. 1926, Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company pioneered the country's first commercially extruded and fully molded inner tube. Within a few years, other tire companies were following Carlisle's technical lead. 1928, Carlisle was producing 10,000 inner tubes per day and outpacing its competition. 1929, Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company reached a record high employment level of 388 workers. 1930, the stock market crash of 1929 took its toll on American companies. By 1930, the price of natural rubber dropped to a low of 3 cents a pound and Montgomery Ward and Company stock fell by more than 50%. In an effort to save its customer base, Carlyle offered to pay half of Montgomery Ward's excise taxes on inner tubes. Despite this move, Carlyle's core business continued to decline along with its finances, forcing Charles Mummy to work with officials of Chase National Bank to settle Carlyle's debts and avoid bankruptcy. By 1934, the Depression had worsened. The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia and the Farmers Trust Company of Carlisle, Pennsylvania decided to loan Carlisle Tire and Rubber $250,000. In addition, Carlyle's assistant treasurer, M. L. Dunkleberger, pledged his personal assets as collateral to meet weekly payrolls many times during this period. In late 1943, faced with large wartime orders, Carlyle's competitor, Farris Tire and Rubber Company of Newark, Ohio, was badly in need of additional production capacity. Ferber Marshall, president of Farris, negotiated with the Federal Reserve Bank and Farmers Trust Company for the purchase of Carlisle Tire and Rubber Company. The cost to Farris was approximately $330,000. About this time, Farris acquired the Molded Materials Company, a brake lining business in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, which would later become part of Carlisle Brake and Friction in 2008. 1946, George L. Orstrom Sr. founded G.L. Orstrom & Co. in the mid-1920s but changed the company's direction in 1946, focusing on the acquisition of small industrial companies using a leveraged buyout model. The first acquisition that year was Peerless Manufacturing and the firm subsequently bought Ohio Pattern Works and Rotary Lift Company, 1947, G.L. Orstrom & Co. acquired a significant stake in Carlisle, 1949, as part of a liquidation of Farris. All Carlisle stock was distributed to Farris stockholders and the company name officially became Carlisle Corporation. That same year, Carlisle acquired the assets of the Dart Truck Company, a manufacturer of off-highway mining and construction trucks located in Kansas City, Missouri. Carlisle ended the decade with $4 million in annual net sales. 1954, GL. Orstrom & Co. merged Rotary Lift Company of Memphis, Tennessee into Carlisle Corporation and the firm became the controlling shareholder of Carlisle. 
Rotary Lift Company was later sold and became the present-day Dover Corporation with 2015 sales of $6.9 billion and traded under the symbol Dove. 1955, under George L. Orstrom Sr.'s leadership, Carlisle transformed from a tire and rubber company to an enterprise focused on driving an entrepreneurial culture, an aggressive M&A strategy, a decentralized management model and a conservative capital philosophy at its core. 1959, Carlisle acquired Tensolite Insulated Wire Company Incorporated of Tarrytown, New York, which would become Carlisle Interconnect Technologies in 2008. The acquisitions during this decade enabled Carlisle to produce a broad range of new products, including molded radiator hoses, brake blocks and linings, high temperature conductors and insulated wire and cable. By the end of the decade, Carlisle had net sales of $23 million with 550 employees and was on its way to becoming the modern Carlisle companies. Topic History 1960-1999-1960, George L. Orstrom Sr. passed away and his son, George L. Orstrom Jr. began his relationship with Carlisle, refining and accelerating his father's ideals. Carlisle listed its shares on the New York Stock Exchange using the ticker symbol CSL and sought to grow by focusing attention on acquisitions that produced highly specialized, technically advanced, high-margin products that could be sold to industrial customers. 1961, Carlisle developed a synthetic rubber for roofing applications, which would later sell under the brand name Shaw Seal. 1962, Orstrom's acquisition strategy was working. By 1962 over 50% of net sales were generated by products not manufactured by Carlisle prior to 1958. 1967, Carlisle's stock split 2 to 1 for the first time since the IPO. 1962, Carlisle ended the decade with net sales of $83 million and 700 employees. 1972, net sales in 1972 exceeded $100 million for the first time. Carlisle also opened its first international operations in Europe and launched a long-term corporate identification program, which placed increased emphasis on the Carlisle name, yet allowed for division autonomy and identity. 1973, a recession began in the U.S. which lasted until 1975. All Carlisle businesses were affected during this period with net sales falling from $151 million in 1974 to $115 million in 1975, down 24%. 1977, Carlisle acquired Continental Plastics of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, a maker of proprietary molded and vacuum formed plastics for the commercial food service business. This acquisition formed the foundation of what would become Carlisle Food Service Products. 1978, Carlisle's synthetic rubber roofing product, Shaw Seal, rapidly grew in sales from 1978 and quickly became one of the company's most important products. By the late 1970s, the roofing business had become the biggest contributor to Carlisle's earnings. 1979, Carlisle finished the decade with $324 million in net sales with EBIT margin of 11%. Despite the recession in the mid-1970s, Carlisle's sales grew at a 15% CAGR through the decade. Capital expenditures in 1979 were also a record $24 million, a large percentage of which was spent on expansion of capacity to produce shore seal roofing systems. 1980, Carlisle's stock jumped from a high of $29 in 1979 to $86 in 1980 as Carlisle's shore seal rubber roofing products grew in popularity. 1982, despite a recession in 1982 driving net sales lower 7%, by 1983, Carlisle had recovered to a record $412 million of net sales. 
1986, Carlyle Corporation was restructured into a holding company with the name Carlyle Companies Incorporated. 1987, the stock market crash on October 19, 1987, did not significantly affect Carlyle's 1987 net sales, which ended at a record $543 million. 1989, by the end of the decade, homeownership in the United States had risen to 65% from 55% two decades before. American suburban expansion drove the need for shopping malls, schools and other related non-residential buildings, all requiring single-ply membrane roofs. As a result, Carlyle's roofing business grew from $77 million at the start of 1980 to $175 million in net sales by the end of the decade. Carlyle finished 1989 with $553 million in net sales with EBIT margin of 8%. 1990, in addition to focusing on three core segments, Carlyle continued to pursue M&A, leading to the completion of 30 acquisitions during the decade. Carlyle executive leadership laid out a plan to grow the business to $1 billion by 1994 with a new emphasis on international sales. 1992, in order to focus on the core manufacturing platform of rubber, plastics and friction, Carlyle sold the businesses comprising the Data Communications and Electronics Group. 1993, Carlyle's stock split 2 to 1 in both 1993 and 1997 for the fourth and fifth times in its history. 1994, Carlyle acquired a tire plant in Shenzhen, China, the company's first factory in China and second in Asia. Over the next two years, capacity was doubled. 1996, Carlyle eclipsed $1 billion in net sales. 1999, net sales grew to $1.6 billion with EBIT margin of 10% by the end of the decade, an 11% CAGR. Topic history 2000 Today 2001, marked 25 consecutive years of increasing dividend payments for shareholders. 2003, Carlyle surpassed net sales of $2 billion with EBIT margin of 7%. 2007, Carlyle's stock split 2 to 1 for the sixth time in its history. 2008, the Carlyle Operating System COS, based on Lean and Six Sigma principles, was launched, combining people, process, technology and innovation in a collaborative effort to improve performance and drive profitability. Carlyle's pillar strategy was developed to drive operating excellence and focus investment in the company's core businesses. Carlyle Construction Materials (CCM), Carlyle Interconnect Technologies (CIT), Carlyle Brake and Friction (CBF), Carlyle Food Service Products (CFS), and Carlyle Transportation Products (CTP). 2009, by the end of the decade, net sales reached $3 billion with EBIT margin of 6%. Carlyle employed over 10,000 employees worldwide. 2015, Carlyle continued to focus on acquisitions to drive growth. In 2015 Carlyle invested in a new platform, acquiring Finishing Brands Holdings Inc. for $590 million funded all in cash. This business would become a pillar. Carlyle Fluid Technologies (CFT) 2016 annual net sales reached $3.7 billion with over 13,000 employees worldwide. Since 2008, Carlyle had doubled sales, increased EBIT margin by over 600 basis points, invested over $700 million in capital expenditures and accumulated over $150 million in savings from COS. In this same eight-year period, Carlyle deployed over $2.4 billion acquiring 15 businesses. These acquisitions proved transformative for the company. Carlyle also celebrated 40 consecutive years of dividend increases for shareholders.
The board of directors voted to move the corporate headquarters to Scottsdale, Arizona. September 12, 2017 marked the 100-year anniversary of Carlyle Companies Incorporated. In October 2017, Carlyle acquired Accela Performance Materials, a premium specialty polyurethane company, and the largest acquisition in Carlyle's history. 2018, in early 2018, Carlyle launched Vision 2025, the cornerstone of the company's next 100 years. In Vision 2025, Carlyle seeks to drive above market organic growth, build scale in core businesses by pursuing synergistic acquisitions, further leverage the COS culture to drive efficiencies through all business processes, continue to return cash to shareholders, and invest in attracting, developing, and retaining exceptional talent. Additionally, in February 2018, Carlyle divested Carlyle Food Service Products. Topic See also List of S&P 400 companies